got a chance, take it, take it while you got a chance. If you got a dream, chase it, cause a dream won't chase you back. If you're gonna love somebody, hold them as long and as strong and as close as you can, till you can. Square in London with the big uh, statue um, and the lions on it, that's where it comes from, from the famous battle that was held here. But that is not of concern to us today because we've got our own battles going on and the smaller battle being the one with the tuna nets. This is a really nasty area of coast for huge tuna nets that are all marked up on the map. Sorry, Stuart's trying to get in and trying to navigate. Yeah, he's trying to sail the boat. Um, so we've got tuna nets to avoid. Um, we've done one lot successfully, and you could see between the um, like the big boys, you could actually see them all floating on the surface. Like, um, you know those lane dividers in the swimming pool? They actually look like that on the surface, but I couldn't film it because it was too far away, you'd never see it. Then we have the orca whales, killer whales. Um, they are extremely active in this area and they have been attacking sailboats for a couple of years now and it's random. Um, and what they do is they come and try and basically bite the rudder off. Um, so that's your steering mechanism that sits underneath the boat. So the strategy is basically um, keep nice and close to the shore so we're in depths of sort of 20 meters and less and watch out for them um so far i was going to say we've had zero sightings and it's all been very calm so we're quite glad at that even though it's gray and you know weather's not great today and it's like being back in england not spain but it is all fine on the whale front but we are going around the corner of Cape Trafalgar and towards Tarifa and then into the Gibraltar Straits so I will um, give you a further update later. That's if we're still alive. It's got out nice this afternoon and I just wanted to say that I'm really excited because we can see Morocco through the cloud. I'm going to show you anyway you probably can't see it in fact, I'll probably put one of those little arrows on to show you where it is, but we can see the mountains of Morocco, so it's really exciting. There you are, looks like a bunch of cloud to you lot, but honestly, honestly, I can see through them with my X-ray vision and I can see two sets of mountains. Well, it'll be the same set of mountains, but I mean two patches through the cloud. I have a bit of water in the build, but uh, it doesn't seem to be a problem for the moment. Uh, my rudder is functioning correct. I'm getting a bit closer to shore, and I will have a look as soon as I get a chance. Over. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Well, copy. Just come round to Reefa, and um, it's been an orca attack on the radio. It sounds like the boat wasn't. Um, damaged and it was in this area Stuart got the coordinates I wasn't listening properly and um, as we've come through we've seen a fin next to the boat one fin twice and that's it so we're on red alert because we're not out the danger zone yet um, we've come back into the shallow water but like I say we're still not out of the um, 
danger zone, so we've got eyes peeled galore. More like out on stalks, I think. The good news is here, we haven't seen any more orcas yet. And we're just arriving in the Bay of Gibraltar. And it's like Paddy's Fair. I've never seen anything like it. The sea's got up um, and there's just ships everywhere. Right, I might eat my words here, but I'm going to say this for the record. Um, I thought Gibraltar was supposed to be like Monaco, like some chic place. And it is like arriving in Teesport. Um, I I've never seen anything like it. And I've been all over. This is the Spanish side over here. All, I mean, it's Al oh, Algeciras port on this side. And we've got all the ships anchored in the middle. We've got oil works, tons of cranes. Um, obviously a huge, huge, huge busy port. But never have I heard that Gibraltar faces this. So I'm a bit stunned. Either I've not done my research. Um, or I've misunderstood or what. But like I said, might eat my words. But this is my first impression. State of this where we are on this um, boating pontoon. We've been going around for an hour. We didn't know where we were going. We don't speak hardly any English. My Spanish was uh, not working to find out where it was going. Absolute nightmare. There's like these great big girders sticking out of the pontoon side. So we've had to ram fenders down there, but the movement on it is horrific. I've had enough, absolutely had enough of this. Um, one of the, I think one of the worst places I've ever come in. Well, the first thing I'm going to say is I think my hair says it all. Um, that coming in was absolutely horrendous i think it was probably one of the worst parts i've ever been in and the landing because of that well first of all the wind got up like 30 knots so that's just lovely when you're starting to try and park your boat after doing an 18 hour sail and then the pontoon that we went on was just awful wasn't it Stuart? it was like an industrial pontoon yeah it was a, a reception pontoon so not only um, did you have to pack it once, you had to pack it twice. And the reception pontoon was made out of concrete and it was a high wall which meant that the fenders um, weren't actually touching the pontoon so the um, hull risked scraping against the concrete. So at the last minute we had to raise the, the, um, the fenders um, with a, a 30 knot wind pushing us onto the, onto the pontoon and then we had to climb up the pontoon. Um, then once we um, went through the reception and booked in, uh, we were told to go to another pontoon. So we had to get off this pontoon, but to get off the pontoon with the onshore, 30 knots onshore, without being able to spring the bow of the stern out was very, very difficult. Uh, anyway, but we managed it. Well, um, I was gonna say, and then we had to reverse in the dark with the horrible wind to a pontoon where the guys were there to help us swing in their lanterns so we could see where we, we were going but the wind wasn't playing ball so then we had to turn around change sides which meant while Stuart's trying to do his manoeuvring I'm rushing around with the fenders changing all the sides fortunately I'd already got the ropes on but yeah the whole thing was just horrible um and I'm, I'm like at the end of my tether and poor Stuart has to deal with parking the boat and me at the end of my tether so obviously we've got the Plymouth out um, we're nearly at the end of it we were going to have it anyway to celebrate getting in but fucking hell we need it um, but but the sail was good but yes excellent sail down the Straits of Gibraltar we got up to um, 10 knots rode down the, the Straits of Gibraltar so we're very glad it's all over so now we're in the med apparently our holiday and we start living from this point forward and i tell you what i hope bleeding gibraltar's worth it because after all that to get in um it had better be so here we go we're um we're here we survived good night everybody right here we are at the fuel berth in gibraltar 
we've just come round from the other marina because the fuel's a lot cheaper and um, again another nice high pontoon it's all okay we've managed it um, getting back on is interesting I'm going to get Stuart to film me jump, jumping back on because it is a bit of a long jump right getting back on board is not very easy due to the height of the pontoon so we have some acrobatic small amount of acrobatics that has to go on here One, two, three. There we are. Simply back on board. Where the fuel station is, is right next to the runway. So we've just got an easy jet taking off right now. So you can imagine us shitting ourselves when we suddenly saw these coming at the water. But the dolphins. Ah! <laughs> Jumped right out the water. Have we seen these? Is he having a laugh? Is he having a laugh? So there's the red dinghy, then there's a little one and a Halberg Rassi. It looks like next to the Halberg Rassi. That won't fit. There's no way that'll fit. That boat's completely screwed with. We'll never get in there. That boat will not fit in there. That's impossible. He's too far, he's too far over. No chance. It just won't go in. Okay. Just revert, I'd reverse out. It's what I hate. People who give you parking allocations have never sailed a pissing boat in their lives. Never mind, parked one. Okay. 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 No problem. Thank you. It's to do with allocating you the size of berth for your boat. Because they were saying in Fuengi Roller, what they do is they say, oh no, we have no space for your boat, but we'll give you an 80 foot catamaran job and then you pay £6,000. So that's common practice. Right, let me go check this out. Okay, Stuart, so we've got. Stuart, we've got a white one, a white one, and a navy one, so it won't be there. So I'm guessing after this navy one, Stuart. Can you see the navy one? Please tell me not there. That's too that's too narrow. Where is he? Oh you seeing in, in there? That's just the same. There's no way. No way! Okay, back to the office. Yeah, yeah. Watch over these. That's it. Yeah, you're okay, Stuart. You're okay, you've missed all these lines. They must be absolutely stupid in the office. You'd get a 37 footer in there. Jesus Christ, we we'll need more Plymouth. I know from even going in that one in Pawnee Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he came and he helped us and he it, it did just fit, but they, that, those two birds, this thing does not fit, period.
And as for that twat saying if they don't like it, they can fuck off. What cheeky fucking bastard. This, honestly, this is, I'd, I'd pay for everyone's boat repairs for the principle of proving that the fucking boat don't fit. Watch what? Bow's fine. Which bow are you after? His bow. Our bow's fine. Okay, one, two, three. That's one on. Right, one, two, three. Right, how does this go around here? What, just round our cleat like that? Yeah. Ah, excellent to Gracias. Buenas tardes. Another important Cabo Point Cape. Cabo, should I even looked on the map before we did this? Palo, Palos, thank you, Stuart. Cabo Palos. And that means we are now on the home straight up to Benador, which is where we are heading. But I looked in the book earlier, and Benador doesn't actually have a port that is big enough um, for anything. It's a tiny, tiny port. Um, it's had no development whatsoever despite the size of Benador so that is quite surprising anyway we can't go in there we could anchor but I said to Stuart I really don't fancy having to get the dinghy ashore and mow the dinghy up and then get the dinghy back after a night in Benador that to me is asking for trouble so we think we're going to head to Alicante where they've got obviously all the facilities big port da -de da and we'll get the bus round or train or something over to Benidorm and go and check that out. So that so far is the highlight of my trip, um, on this section anyway, because to be honest, from what we've seen of the Costa Blanca so far, it's just barren, absolutely barren. Um, mountains, down to the sea, there's nothing there, there's absolutely nothing there and it has gone on and on. And like today, no wind, so we've got to motor for 10 hours. So we've just come round this corner now and the wind is um, now in the right direction. So we're going to do some sailing up until we drop later. Um, we might keep an anchorage, we might keep going, we're not sure yet. Um, it's been a nice day, a lot of sun out, um, as it seems to be nearly every day now, which of course is fantastic. Um, yeah, so there's a little update from the bridge this afternoon. I've just got out the shower and come up on deck and it's absolutely beautiful, beautiful light. Um, the, the funny thing is, I'm saying beautiful, we're anchored in a part of a port that is under development shall we say in inverted commas and it looks like it's been under development for quite some time and it's quite underdeveloped still so i'm just going to show you the um i don't know what you call them almost like the walls of what would be the new marina um here we go they're like all broken up and over there as well and i guess as everything does with good light and good sunrise and sunset, 
all looks romantic um, and not as bad as it kind of does in reality if you see what I mean but anyway the lights really pretty um, I just need some fresh air after the uh, steamy shower not not steamy shower you know what I mean the uh, warm bathroom <laughs> Just arrived in Benidorm, having got the train or the tram actually from Alicante. Absolutely superb um, tram, but we're so thirsty having to wait in the um, Alicante train station, tram station, and uh, so we've stopped on a bench on the side of the road with a can of coke from the little corner shop just over here. Um, you know the type of mini mart, I mean, and. Um, just round, I was going to say, we sat next to all these mopeds. <laughs> Look at this. So that's our <laughs> first stop living it up in Benidorm on this dodgy yellow plastic park bench. Was, um, was great. Um, um, it was different to um, most of the other places we've, we've been to so far. And the other um, great thing is it was tax-free, so the bar prices were, were, were low. Um, a bottle of vodka was four pounds. Um, a litre litre of diesel was um, ninety cents, which is um, half the price of any, any anywhere else. Um, but the other thing is quite vibrant. Um, uh, there's lots of activity. And there was even entertainment in the bars, which um, we haven't had so far. And it, it was British, but it was British not in a holiday sense, it was British as in a, a cultural sense. So yeah, I quite like, um, I liked um, um, Gibraltar. The other thing I want, want to um, uh, point out and talk about is the orcas. Now the orcas um, in um, uh, the Gibraltar Straits um, do present a real threat. While we're sailing through the Gibraltar Straits, we actually um, heard of the radio, um, uh, three maydays um, of boats in front of us and behind us that had been attacked by um, orcas um, uh, and it's only a matter of time before somebody gets killed by the, the orcas. My beef is the authorities are not doing anything to um, safeguard or protect us. If it was a marauding pit bull terrier in Manchester, um, something would have happened. Or if it was a, a marauding um, elephant in um, India, so the authorities would have done something to protect us. Um, the advice that the authorities um, give us are um, very um, uh, benign and um, uh, um, non-offensive towards the, the orcas because the orcas are protected um, species. Um, the advice, uh, advice um, uh, 
are things like keep to 20 meters. Um, now anybody that sailed down um, the west, west coast of Spain and through Gibraltar to keep to 20 meters depth is nigh on impossible. You'd be running around every, every two, two minutes or running into tuna nets, so it's, 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 so it's impossible. Um, we did actually talk to some um, fishermen in both um, Spain and Portugal and remarkably none of those guys ever get attacked by orcas. Um, they do have certain techniques that they use and utilise uh, to protect themselves um, which we're not allowed to do, um, it's not the, um, the advice that we're given but they never ever get any, um, uh, any um, attacks in, in themselves. The orcas only ta attack yachts people that are making a, 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 a um, journey down through the Straits of Gibraltar which is, which is interesting. I loved Spain, absolutely loved it. We had to skip the Costa del Sol because we just needed to make progress further up north. So that was a real shame for me, but even so, we enjoyed it from um, Almeri Mar onwards. Um, Alicante was fantastic, absolutely superb city. Not at all what I was expecting, really, really loved it. And I absolutely loved Benidorm. There's two sides to it. There's a, like a Spanish side and a British side. Alicante is a superb city. The people and the culture is absolutely superb. The um, prices are extremely good value for money. Um, great, great food, um, and the public services are, are, are top class. The um, tram system, the rail system, yeah, and the, the buses, and the, and the cleanliness of, of the towns and cities is first class. Um, and I recommend it. You know, if you get a chance to go there, go there. There you are. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. Join us for the next one where we are in Ibiza, Mallorca, and then heading across to South Coast of France. So, thank you very much. See you later.